The struggle over outposts continued. Today began with the uprooting of a vineyard in the Ilon Moray community and continued with clashes between Arabs and Jews, as well as the violent arrest of Knesset member Dr. Michael Ben-Ari. INN TV was on the scene. Following the uprooting of the Nachlat Yosef outpost, which has since been rebuilt, the activists set out to the streets with the goals of preventing more uprooting activities and to set a price tag for the anti-settlement actions of the security forces. A number of stones are placed on the road to block the way for the convoy returning from Nachlat Yosef. The stones are removed as activists Ben Gvir and Marzel are on scene to witness the events from close. We see again that the Israeli government is strong against the Jews and weak against the enemy. They will destroy trees that Jews plant, all of trees, in the Shomron. In the same time, hundreds of thousands of Arabs are planting trees all over the Judean Sumeria, the Galilee, in the Negev, and no one is doing something against it. As we noticed the smoke from afar, we continued to the community of Yitzhar. Rumors initially stated the forces were on the way to uproot Chavat Gilad, but counter reports assert that no significant outpost will be uprooted before negotiations with the residents. Fires were set on the outskirts of Yitzhar, and the entrance to the community was blocked. <laughs> At this moment, an attempt is being made to breach the blockade. There is a tow truck and they are trying to break through. The forces use a tow truck to tear the metal chain. As they finally succeed and begin working on moving the car standing in their way, the young activists assemble and confrontations begin. <laughs> Knesset member Mikhail Benari of the National Union arrives and immediately demands an explanation as to why the soldiers were arresting minors and not allowing him to examine their condition. <laughs> Ben-Ari jumps on the hood of a border police jeep, agreeing to step down, only after an officer would explain why police handcuffed and arrested juveniles. Why did they handcuff children in such a vicious way, with hands behind their backs? And why were they arrested? Someone must explain to me why. The officer responsible must come here. Everyone is running away and sending low rank soldiers. You are a group of cowards. No one steps forward. The officers violently pull Ben-Ari off the jeep, and the rest, the freshman MK. During the arrest, we hear many soldiers and border policemen asking each other, is it allowed for us to apprehend the Knesset member? Doesn't he have immunity? <laughs> ben Ari's arrest is not the last one as more activists are taken to the armored prisoner vehicle in handcuffs. These border policemen brutally beat me. They said I attacked them and threw me on rocks and thorns. I feel the authorities are pitiless, with no Jewish heart, and they allow soldiers and young boys to confront each other. They send them on a mission which is far from their goal. They force us to battle with soldiers for our homes instead of confronting the government. This hurts me very much. The soldiers don't understand what we are fighting for. We try to explain to them that we are fighting for our homes. We are here and we will stay here while the government will pass. The eternal nation belongs to this place. It can't be detached. Agreements come and go, but we will stay and gain strength even from these difficult experiences. Everyone knows that this is a game. We continue to build and on the field you can see that we strengthen after every evacuation. The only thing that hurts here is the confrontation with the soldiers and policemen. That's what lies heavy on our hearts. Meanwhile, the first roadblock on the way to Yitzhar has been removed, but as we ascend towards the community, 
we see there are still many blocks awaiting the forces. Some call this a war of attrition. We have here many uh, surprises for anyone who will try to hurt us. We're fighting for our land. And it's a mitzvah, we're doing it, Bezrat Hashem. And this is how the struggle is going to look in the next few days. We're going to see more activities like these. Uh, the rumors were all talking about the fact that the, uh, the uh, security forces were on their way to the area of Chavad Gilad. But uh, the uh, young uh, activists here with uh, all their protests and the blocking of the road here were able to bring lots of forces to here. And uh, the main events occurred down here at uh, the Tzara intersection. And in the next few days we'll be seeing more of these activities. Basically everything that went on here is part of a tactic to, uh, to make sure that the forces will be busy with other things that won't have time, uh, won't have the resources to actually go ahead and uproot the outposts and communities. We don't know exactly where they're going and where they want to evict the, the people from their houses. And you don't know, they say they're going someplace, they might go anywhere else. But anyway, it's called Arvuta Dadit. We are all responsible for each other and we all help each other. And we're scared that they might, we might leave here a weak point and then they'll go, they'll go, they'll decide, oh, it's easy to evict the people from here, so they go evict. They like uh, evicting peace people from the houses if they're Jews. From Itzar, we continue to Chavat Gilad. Fire is blazing here as well. The confrontations here were mainly with neighboring Arabs. Things have calmed down and the situation can be summed up for the day. I think it's the dynamics of an evolving event. You can't take a powder keg, put in a burning match, and think that it won't explode. It's important to know that it is not the residents who ignite this fire. Rather, Defense Minister Barak does this with full awareness. I think that the agenda of the demolition of outposts and small and big communities brings upon this public fury that bursts forth. There's no detailed guidelines. It's a dynamic that emerged. Defense Minister Barak knows how to ignite the area. This all comes from the American pressure, which wants to see blood spill between Jews and Jews in Judea and Samaria. I think that the outposts are very strong. The will to hold onto the land of Israel is irrepressible. These harassments in the past few weeks, and probably during the next few weeks, are difficulties that we must deal with.